So about a year ago, I made a video called Seven Terrain Makers That You Absolutely Must Follow or Else. And the reason I made this video is to showcase some of my favorite terrain makers who have been extremely influential to me. One of the obvious people to include on this list was Saul Vince, a man whose dark and gritty vision of the 40k and Necromunda universes have changed the way terrain makers have approached their craft since he came onto the scene. So when I found out that Saul was selling one of his Necromunda tiles that actually was a specific piece that inspired me many years ago, I left it the chance to own a terrain masterpiece. I knew that if I were to buy this piece, he would probably mail it to me from his home address, and then I'd be able to blackmail him to share all his techniques with me, or I'll dox him to my 70,000 subscribers. I'm just kidding, I would never do that. But I was able to get the piece. It's in here in this box. I have never opened it yet. We're gonna do that together. In the art world, it's long been known that to get good, you gotta study the masters. So today we're gonna open up this piece by Saul, we're going to study it together and we're going to see what we can learn. But first I'd like to thank the sponsor who made this video possible, making me able to support one of my favorite creators and to add this beautiful piece to my collection to show to you guys. And that sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a mobile RPG game that's surprisingly fun for a game that fits right in your pocket. If this sounds interesting to you, use my links below to download Raid for yourself for your mobile or PC. Check out these champions, guys. We've got the Abbess, and she's got an interesting outfit. She's got like an Elizabethan rough collar. It's an interesting bit of costume. Or how about this Astralon? This guy, I really like the look of. He's got the dark body and red wings. I might do something like this for my Blood Angels army at some point. My favorite part of the game is upgrading your champions at the tavern. I just love giving them some digital tankards of ale. And this month, Raid's got a non-stop schedule of summer events and activities. There are special fusion events to get a brand new legendary champion, tournaments against other players, and more. They've also just released five amazing new champions, with a whole new rotation of the Doom Tower with two new bosses and a clan update that's bringing a ton of new missions and rewards. So if you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan my QR code and you'll get an epic hero, Chinoru, who's amazing in the Doom Tower, 200,000 silver, one XP boost, one energy refill, and one ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. And all of this treasure will be waiting for you in your inbox right here. All right guys, links down in the description. Thanks very much again, Raid, for supporting this video. Now let's open this thing. Okay, you guys ready? So one of the first things I notice about this piece is that it's very playable. Now what do I mean by playable? Well, I mean that there are spots all around the terrain piece where models can go. This means that the terrain can be scaled and traversed and become part of the game, rather than just something that looks nice and blocks line of sight. There are also no places that are hard to reach into, which makes gameplay much easier. Even where there are railings, they're designed in a way that accommodates the miniature's bases. I also noticed that it's broken up into sub-levels with varied heights, always large enough to accommodate a model's base, but keeping the appearance interesting. Now you may have noticed that this piece is mostly made up of Games Workshop pieces. Some of them are easily identifiable, like this Alchemite stack here and the plasma conduits going across. If you're experienced in terrain, you'll recognize those right away. But it's the mixing and bashing together of kits where Sol really shines. This piece here is from an old Rhino tank. This door here is from a Land Raider. This structure here and this piece here are from Munitorium Armored Containers. I know most of the Games Workshop kits pretty well, but as I look around this thing, I keep noticing interesting details from different kits used in a creative and transformative way. So the way he's used color ties into this. Visually, individual structures are tied together by their color schemes, but there are still zones of color across the piece that give it variation while the overall palette is still unified. One of the ways he keeps the palette unified is with weathering. This chipped rusty effect appears all over the piece, bringing the disparate shapes and hues together with a common element. I spoke to Saul about his techniques, and he confirmed to me that he uses a chipping medium to get some of this weathering effect. To get the appearance of layered and varied grime and rust on the piece, Saul told me he uses homemade washes from various pigments and mineral spirits. The washes are applied in many layers and very gradually, this allows a lot of control and some very nuanced results. He's also added some nice green filth around the structure. 
To me, this look implies that the area is either very humid or floods periodically. Either way, it paints a nice picture of neglect and the suboptimal conditions for machine maintenance that support the rusty and grimy finishes on the mechanical bits. Lastly, I'm really impressed with the little details that Saul puts around the piece. Small touches like how this door is wired shut and padlocked, they really sell the sense of scale but also give the piece a sense of character and story. Or this toolbox left over here by the control panel. You can almost picture the servitor or menial returning from their lunch break at any moment. So what can I take away from this project for my own projects? Well, for one, I'm really interested in trying these homemade pigment washes with the mineral spirits. I've been using mostly acrylic washes on my own pieces to this point, and I think this will be a cool technique to experiment with to take things to the next level. I also feel inspired to dip into my bits box a little bit more. The level of detail all around this piece, just taken from GW bits, is astounding. There's something about all the rivets and little molded details that really adds something extra to the piece. Historically, I've been very stingy with my own bits box, but I think this is inspiring me to loosen up a little bit and let some of the pieces that I've collected over the years make their way into my projects. I have to say guys, it feels pretty good to get a hold of this piece. As I've mentioned many times, I've admired Saul Vince's work for years, and it's pretty cool to me to have one of his originals now in my collection. By the way, I'll link to Saul Vince's Instagram in the description below, so if you wanna check out more of his stuff, you can find it there. I'm really happy to have been able to support a fellow creator, and I've also learned a ton from this piece. So this has been really fun for me, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. We'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.